Hello all and welcome to Alex's World of Safe Space. For wrestling fans, wrestling fans, or wrestling fans like you. Just bit my tongue, but we still going. I'm your host, Alex, just Alex, and this is my WWE SmackDown Friday Night SmackDown review. Ladies and gentlemen, I thought the Bloodline storyline was on life support. I was on that. I was on that train, like the rest of y'all, that was saying, man, this can't end soon enough. This has overstayed his welcome. It is no longer fun. It is bleeding dry. Bleeding itself dry. There is nothing left other than a potential match between Rock and Roman Reigns. Boy, was I wrong. I just never thought... It would come with Solo Sokoa. I mean, I had an idea. They were hyping Solo to be the tribal chief for what feels like a year now. I didn't think it would come this way. And this is one of those instances where you have to take a step back and remove the critic cap. Stop looking at it from the standpoint of, all right, I'm going to look for problems look for issues so then i can talk about it and tell them what they can fix this is one of those instances where the masters are showing you how it's done what they're doing with solo sokoa tama tonga and what i'm assuming is also going to involve jacob fatu and maybe others might be some of the best wrestling television i've seen from them in a long time this is amazing. I cannot wait to talk about tonight's episode, which premiered on April 19th, 2024. The best thing about this show, honestly, is what I just talked about. Everything involving the bloodline, that Solo Sokoa, Paul Heyman, Tama Tonga, and then Kevin Owens getting busted wide open. Oh, the last time we saw this amount of blood, it's it's been a minute. It's not that far removed from The Rock busting open Cody Rhodes. Wasn't that like a month ago? Literally a month ago. It wasn't even like, okay, we did it once in a blue moon kind of ordeal. No, no, no. We're seeing a lot more blood. Raw and SmackDown. I love it. Blood makes things more real. It makes makes things feel a lot more... it, It raises the stakes. You know, it, it makes you sit up and go, oh, oh, okay. And I love that WWE is doing it here and there. It's not happening as frequently as we might want them to do it. But personally, the less, fre- the less frequent it is, the better it will be. Especially for WWE now. As you know, they're moving further and further away from PGTV. As we get away from Fox and we get more into the Netflix era. They're going to have to do more things to attract a bigger audience, which means they're going to have to be a little bit more edgier. They're going to move away from the white bread, white meat baby face and the evil, all-encompassing, devil-like heels and be more, you know, be a little bit more gray with their characters. Actually tell stories, make them more grounded, make them more human. And I feel like what they're getting ready to do with the bloodline, it's going to take this whole thing to a new level because you already know that Roman Reigns is going to come back and he's going to have an issue with what Solo is doing. And you know what? We might actually have an instance, and I can't believe I'm saying this. We might actually have an instance where they can turn Roman Reigns' baby face and it could work naturally. That's not something I say every day. With the way things are being set up, with Sola Sokoa being this, I dare say, this evil, dark reflection of Roman, this uprising in the bloodline, dare I say, wolf pack bloodline, bloodline wolf pack. I don't know if we're going to call it that. We shouldn't. But you have this, and then you also have this idea that this is all being done by the direction of the Rock, the real tribal chief. 
So we got Dwayne The Rock Johnson running things from behind scenes. So Roman comes back. He has to get his own bloodline. He has to get back with Jimmy. He has to get back with Jay. And I love the fact that there could still be some issues they can work through. And there have been issues that they never worked through. Think about it from this perspective. If they bring Roman back, he can't just come back and just be a complete baby face. That's not going to work. You can't make that happen. There's going to be tendencies where he's still that old, how, how dare I say, mad king, mad king Roman Reigns that held the championship for three years, three and a half years, over 1,300 days. He's not going to come back and then he's just a different person. No, he's still Roman. So you're going to have those instances where, yeah, he's trying to be a better person, but he slips up. And then don't get me started. When, when we get to Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns, Roman can't be the babyface. He's going to have to be the heel in that instance. So we might have ourselves sort of an anti-hero kind of ordeal here. Or maybe he's just Roman. I don't want him to come back and be the white bread babyface that John Cena and Hulk Hogan and Cody Rose are, or were. I don't want him to be that. He needs to be his own character. He needs to stand out on his own. He has to be a little bit more gray. Call it anti-hero, call it a tweener, wherever you want. Roman can't come back and just be a regular old white bread baby face. That is not going to work. It's barely working with Cody Rose now. Yeah, the story's done. He won the championship. And like I told you before, great. Now what do you do with him? What's going to happen is now Cody becomes the obstacle because everybody else is way down here and Cody's way up here. I'm already seeing it on social media. Oh, Cody's promos are boring. Oh, they don't have a direction for him. What did you think was going to happen? You just thought that they were going to have a story ready for him? They already had a storyline ready for him. The whole point of him not winning the championship is to keep the fans behind him and keep the fans rooting for him. So then when they eventually give it to him, they'll love it that much more, and then that will give him more longevity as a babyface champion because you kept it from him for such a long time. Now you're like, you're grasping like, oh my God, now he has to hold it forever but you didn't give him enough struggle. So now, okay, he's champion. He's only lost how many times? Like three times, and the people he's lost to, who are they? Rock? Drew? Roman? That's it. Well, okay, he's going to fight Rock at SummerSlam. That's somebody. Okay, but then, but then after that, what, what, what does he do? Drew's going to be fighting CM Punk. We run into a problem with Cody Rhodes now where it's no longer believable for anyone to competitively beat him. We've gone from one, we've gone from one unstoppable champion to another unstoppable champion. I don't see Cody Rhodes losing that belt to anybody. I don't see anyone beating Cody Rhodes. And here's the thing. I don't even see The Rock beating Cody Rhodes. That should tell you something. He's already beaten Roman. I don't see The Rock beating him. We don't have anybody lined up for him to fight. What do you do? What do you do? And I see people in the live chat talking about that this was inevitable. That people were going to turn on Cody, which, by the way, I called going back to last year. I even told y'all before WrestleMania 39, if you haven't won the championship, give it six months and people are going to turn on him. I, I might have been giving him too much grace. I at least gave him half a year of a grace period where it's like, okay, people, he just won the championship. Let the fans like him. But eventually, that will lose its luster when you realize, well, there isn't really anyone else for him to believably have a feud with. What are you going to do? Have him fight Brock Lesnar? That's another one I just remembered. Brock. So Brock, 
Rock, Roman, Drew. So four people. I don't know if we'll, I don't know if we will ever get Brock Lesnar back again. But even then, that's not a good list. And then I see someone saying, what about John Cena? That's my, again, so what, you're going to bring in some legends now? Let's bring in Goldberg, I guess. I'm joking. But like John Cena? And then some people said Gunther. Nah. Mm -mm. And also, you risk running the, you, you, you run the risk of having Gunther come across as a baby face, too, which is not, that's not something I could potentially believe. Um, I mean, sure, Randy Orton, but do you want, that's another thing too, like, do you want Cody to lose the belt to Randy? Also, you put him against Randy Orton, I'm gonna be rooting for Randy Orton. So, you don't really, you don't really have anybody, and then someone's like, well, we got a draft. What's that gonna do? It doesn't matter what roster you give him. He's so unbeatable. What are you gonna do? Someone said Braun Breaker. I mean, if you build him up strong enough, okay. We'll see. Someone just reminded me that. I said a while ago that Gunther should end Cody's first reign. I don't think I actually said that. I might have suggested it. Uh, I don't know who. Quite frankly, I don't know who could believably end his first reign. Actually, you know who I actually did suggest? I suggested John Cena. I suggested a heel John Cena come in and end Cody's reign. That's what I suggested. I don't think I ever... I might have brought up the idea of Gunther ending it. But I remember suggesting John Cena. Uh, Brian Breaker, people are saying Brian Breaker again. I'm cool with that. But we'll see. Like, I'm already seeing it. I'm already reading people's comments. This, this, the, the turn is going to happen. You don't want to hear it. You don't want to... You don't want to... You don't want to come to the realization or just admit that a white bread baby face like Cody Rhodes, someone who in all, you know, in all intents and purposes, is just another John Cena, another Hulk Hogan. Eventually, people will get sick of it. And then we're right back to, let's go, well, in this case, let's go Cody. Cody sucks. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. When it happens, I don't know. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. And what's not going to help him is what they're doing with the Bloodline storyline. Because you're also going to realize that there's nothing interesting going on with Cody Rhodes as interesting as it is to see the Bloodline storyline. Yeah, I can see Roman Reigns coming back and instantly being the top babyface again. It's still Roman's show. I, I still feel like even now, yes, Cody's holding the belt. We have a champion here. But I still feel like it's Roman Reigns' show. More so now than ever. It still feels like Roman's show. And when he comes back and we begin this feud... Or begin the build up to Rock and Roman next year, which, yeah, that there's nothing else here left to do. When it comes to Roman Reigns, there's literally nothing else for him to do. The only thing left for him to do, okay, well, maybe you can do one more thing. So let's go two. The two things left for him to do is a feud with Seth Rollins, because we gotta get back to that. And then, of course, the WrestleMania match with The Rock. That's it. Those are the only two things left to do. You might be able to find something in there with him and CM Punk. You might get something extra with him and Braun Breaker. But those are 
That's extra. The only thing left for Roman to do at this point in time is a feud with The Rock and a WrestleMania match. Ultimately. And then, of course, him finishing, wrapping up, putting a bow in his rivalry with Seth Rollins, which could be one of those ordeals where they're just going to feud forever. I just feel like there's a lot more to get out of the Bloodline storyline. And people are going to take that as me hating on Cody Rhodes. I, I don't know what else to tell y'all. If y'all been listening to me for the last two, three years when it comes to Cody, I've been talking about this since AEW. I said, Cody Rhodes, to me, is not someone that I can get invested in unless he's a heel. To me, I see more out of Cody as a heel than I do as a babyface. He's a fantastic babyface. People love him as a babyface. But it's just too white meat for me. And that's just me. I'll admit it. It's just me. Maybe the majority of the world would would prefer him as a babyface. But for me personally, I don't know what else you want me to say. At least I'm consistent. That's one thing about me that you can't say about other content creators. I'm consistent. I gave Cody his flowers. I gave Cody the the stamp of approval. I said he should win at WrestleMania 40. Uh, 40. Um, I was right in saying he should not have won last year. Some of y'all were mad. And I said, well, this is probably the best thing that could have happened to him because he's going to be even more over. Now look at him. I've been consistent with Cody. And now that he's the champion, great. What what have I been telling y'all? I've been telling y'all, well, now we run into another problem. He's the obstacle now. Now the chase is over. Now what do you do? People are saying I'm being too hard on him. I'm not being hard on him. That's what it is. That is what it is right now. I'm I'm looking at the picture and I'm telling you what's on the picture. If Cody manages to stay a babyface, because I gave him six months. If we get to WrestleMania 41 and he's still as over as he is and fans aren't booing him, I will be. I will be surprised. I will eat crow like there's never been crow eaten before. But, just so we're clear, I've been doing this for 13 years. I haven't eaten that much crow. Usually my my projections are spot on. And honestly... I don't think what I'm saying is that far-fetched. Be honest with me. Be honest with me, those in the live chat. Be honest with me. You guys anticipate the fans turning on Cody too. Come on. Come on. Everything that I said, from Roman coming back as a babyface, to him fighting The Rock, Solo Sokoa being like this, this uprising version the, the Wolfpack version of the um, bloodline with, of course, Tama Tonga and then Jacob Fatu who comes in. Then you do a few with Roman, Jimmy, and Jay. I mean, like, all this shit that I'm talking about, I can't be the only one that foresaw this. You guys have been watching wrestling as long as I have. You foresee this, too. You know how this shit works. I'm not saying anything that's out of whack. Someone said Bobby Lashley. I would love it if Bobby became an ultimate an ultimate motherfucking beast that ran through Cody Rose and stripped him stripped him of that belt. I would love it more than anything else. But that's neither here or there. AJ Styles. AJ Styles earned himself a championship match against Cody Rhodes at Backlash in France. 
which is in, I think, two weeks, right? Two weeks from this Saturday. Yep, two weeks. Um, what, what do you want me to say here? There ain't a single person in this live chat watching this after the fact that believes AJ Styles is going to be Cody Rhodes. That's how it starts. You're going to get to the match, and then you're going to be like, oh, well, AJ deserves to have his moment. AJ deserves to have uh, a chance to hold that belt and be seen as a top guy. And, and, you know, and then, then it starts to carry on to the next person that Cody's going to run through, and the next person, until you get to a person like The Rock, where, okay, you're like, I want to see Cody beat him. I don't want The Rock to hold the championship. No, Cody's going to be a babyface a little bit more. And I think, ultimately, that's why I'm giving him six months. Because although the fans are turning on him now, they'll get behind him again when The Rock comes back at SummerSlam. After he gets past The Rock, we're going to have an issue. Because then you know he's going to run through almost every single person until we get to, what, WrestleMania? Where he'll fight Randy Orton, who, let's be real, I seriously doubt he's going to lose to. And now people are throwing up names like Obafemi, Braun Breaker. I don't know, y'all. I don't know. We'll have to see. We will have to see. But I, I can see where this is going with AJ. We're going to get to the match. AJ's going to lose. People are going to be pissed off that, why does AJ have to lose? How come AJ doesn't get his moment and then Cody's going to go on to be a dominant champion and then fans are going to hate him because he's going to feel like an obstacle and this is how it starts. This is how it starts. And you can sit here and tell me that this was inevitable. The fans turning on him now were never behind him to begin with. That's not necessarily true. I personally believe that those who are turning on him, they're turning on him because they were thinking they were going to get something and then they didn't get it. People who never believed in Cody from Jump Street, trust me, don't believe in Cody now. We're not talking about people who were haters of Cody Rhodes and then became lovers and then they became haters again. No, if, if you're a hater of Cody Rhodes, you're still a hater of Cody Rhodes. There isn't this idea that, well... They were sh wolf and sheep clothing. They pretended to like Cody Rhodes, but they never. Re no, like that's that that doesn't exist. And that's narr that narrative. I'm just gonna kick out right now. That doesn't exist. If you don't like Cody Rhodes, if you didn't like Cody Rhodes in 2016, you don't like Cody Rhodes now. People are gonna turn on them. It's okay. You anticipate it. You know what's going to happen. But my thing is this. I can sit here all day and anticipate, project all this stuff. A lot can happen in six months. A lot can happen in a year. I just did a series. Uh, I'm doing a series now. A video that's going viral, by the way. Titled WWE 10 Years Later. Explaining WWE to my past self 10 years ago. Do you understand how much has happened in this last decade? Do you understand what's what's been going on in the last year? So much has happened in the last year, let alone the last 10 years. So, I'm just giving you my realistic expectations of what to expect when it comes to champions like Cody Rhodes. For all we know, Cody Rhodes as he is now... Might not be the Cody Rhodes a year from now when we go PG, when we leave PG and we go more TV 14. He might get an edge to him. Might be more of a badass. They might develop his character to a point where it's not even the, the white bread baby face that we know him as now. And I'm sitting here going, yeah, I was wrong. It worked. He might not even be champion. By the time we get to SummerSlam, a lot can happen. And I'm keeping, my, I'm keeping an open mind to that. I don't want people to think that I, I just assume it's not going to work. I, I'm just trying. I, 
I'm just essentially doing my job. I'm commentating on what I'm seeing and what I anticipate and how I feel. But ultimately, when it comes to tonight's episode, everything I just talked about, all the main topics, Bloodline, that's Tama Solo beating up Kevin Owens, blooding him up, really showing us they're not fucking around with this new Bloodline. AJ Styles beating LA Knight, yeah, to get a shot at Cody Rhodes. I think the Street Profits get a shot at the tag team titles. And then, tippy time, Tiffany Stratton interfered in the match between Bailey and Naomi, which means Tiffany is probably going to end up fighting Bailey for the championship at the pay-per-view. Uh, yeah, that's that's essentially it. Not not Nothing much else to talk about. Oh, wait, there was that other thing that was very important. We got new designs for the tag team titles. The SmackDown Tag Team Championships are no more. It is now the WWE Tag Team Titles being held by Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. Uh, I think that's about it, honestly. I think I covered everything. I'm literally going through it all. And Carlito lost to Santos Escobar. We're going to have a conversation about that as well. Yep, that's about it. That was SmackDown. I, I personally feel like, and this is just me personally, we're in that low period. And I said this before, I talked about this on Monday. We've hit, we've hit that low period with WWE where things are just kind of resetting. And when things reset, a lot of times what ends up happening is characters go cold. Uh, we have a lot of filler episodes because we're waiting for certain people to come back. I just saw that Seth Rollins got surgery for a torn meniscus. So he was working with a torn meniscus during WrestleMania's evening. He was working two matches with a torn meniscus. That man is definitely the MVP. He got surgery on it. He will be out for what looks like four to six weeks. I don't know. I think he might be out longer. Personally, Bro, t- take your break. Quite frankly, that's that's one of his injuries. He's still dealing with a bad back. Now, I know damn well he's not going to get surgery on the back because he gets surgery on the back. He might be out even longer. We're talking like Randy Orton, one year plus. So he probably just wants to get the surgery on the torn meniscus and then just come right back to work. Man. But you're, you're going to have to go through this low period where we don't have a Roman Reigns, where we don't have a Rock, where we don't have a Seth Rollins, where we don't have the big names, and they're going to be using this time to introduce new characters. We have a draft coming up, and you know, start new storylines, finishing up, and continuing previous storylines. Not everything's going to pop off. Not everything's going to be not everything's going to be great. You're going to have those episodes you just watch and you go, it's kind of Kind of lame. But you expect it, right? So we'll definitely get into SmackDown. And yes, we will talk about the releases. We had three releases from WWE during, I believe, uh, the episode. During SmackDown, even. But when you think about the people who were released, like, okay. You know what I mean? It's like, all right. <laughs> that, that was my thing. When I saw the people released, I, I wasn't necessarily like, really? Like, that that's that's who you drop? That's who we dropping? No, I, I saw the people who were released, and I'm just like, I'm shocked they stayed this long. <laughs> like, be honest. Zia Lee, Zion Quinn. What was the other one? The gender. Don't hinder. The gender. Jinder Mahal. Like, come on. Like, be, be honest with me. Who who here is going to miss them? But we'll talk about it. 
All right, that was a long intro. Let's go ahead and pay these bills. Let's get to the sponsorship. And, of course, let's get to the review. And, of course, we'll hang out with the, the people, the people at the end of the show. So if this is the first time you're watching me, do me a solid favor. Like the video, subscribe, and click that bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Wow, your edit help expand the brand by doing the following things. Join the membership. Click that join button and get the opportunity to request a video of your choosing, whether it's a live reaction, a hot topic, or a review past, present, or future. Also, don't forget to give thanks. Hit that super thanks. If you would like to donate after the fact, you can. Also, like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, just Alex Central. Give me a follow on Instagram. Give me a follow on Spotify. Give me a follow on Cameo. Give me a follow on Threads. Give us a follow on Discord. Join the Discord. Help us get the 200. 200 on Discord. And of course, give me a follow on TikTok. For I am the tickest of the talkest. Donate using PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, Venmo. And yes, which has are officially on you. Can donate at any point in time during the broadcast to get your thoughts played live on the air. Email me at just alexisworld at gmail.com for business inquiries just to say hi and please get yourself a t shirt today at Pro Wrestling Tees and Teespring. Get you an old school Deluxe Man t shirt, get you a new school Alexis World t shirt, but most importantly, get you a blonde hair, blue eyes, apple pie. My, 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 my Mary Good, the remix t shirt made by It's J Knox and Firestar Heart. All this down below in the description box. I want to thank today's sponsor. I, I always talk about protecting yourself. I always talk about creating a safe space. You know, I, I want people to feel safe when they're watching me, when they're here discussing wrestling. And I want that to continue afterwards, especially when you're surfing the web you're putting yourself out there to be scammed, to be hacked, to get all your information stolen by all sorts of people. Nowadays, it's almost imperative that you have protection. Great 24-hour protection. And I think today's sponsor is someone that's here to help you. You know my story. You know my story. My identity was stolen not that long ago. It was literally last year my birthday by a family member and it made me feel powerless it's not something I wish upon anybody and I think these people can make sure it never happens to you so let's get a quick word from our sponsor today's video is sponsored by aura being a victim of identity theft I know all too well about the feeling of being at the mercy of hackers and scammers and being powerless to combat the growing threat of scams and data brokers with the world moving more and more towards social media. Anytime a data broker gets your information, they sell it to scammers, spammers, and anyone who may want to target you, your relatives, and your friends. This is where Aura comes in. Aura is an identity theft protection program that shows you which data brokers are selling your information and automatically submits opt-out requests for you. It even searches the dark web for potential email and password leaks. This will allow you to make necessary changes and get ahead of the scammers. Nowadays, it is imperative to constantly monitor and clean up your information, and not just you, but your friends and your family as well. You get access to other features like antivirus malware protection, password management, identity theft insurance. It's easy to set up and you get everything for one affordable price. So today, if you go to Aura.com Just Alex, you can get started with a two-week free trial, also linked down below in the description. I've used it for a short period of time, and I can say for myself, it is definitely a must-have for all social media users. You never know who is looking to steal your identity. Get control of your internet experience with Aura today. Thank you all so much for joining me. As you guys know, please show your love to the moderators. Ultra, Shout Nice and Fire to Heart, Elias Adibi, New Japan for Wrestling Girl, Khalil Dust, everything, everything, everything. And of course, Big MGM, because they help keep this a safe space for wrestling fans like you. Thank you, moderators, for such a great few weeks of some of the most growth this channel has seen. Numbers are up across the board. 
Memberships are up. Donations are up. Viewerships are up. Subscribers are up. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm about to shock the hell out of you. You ready for this? I hit 40,000 subscribers two weeks ago. The Tuesday, the week of WrestleMania. Two weeks from this past Tuesday, I hit 40,000 subscribers. As I sit before you right now, I am literally, and I'm not making this up, I am literally 22 subscribers away from the big 401k. 41,000. I am on the cusp of it, ladies and gentlemen. I feel like we can hit it tonight. We can hit 41,000 tonight. Right here, right now. Not right here, right now, but right here, right now. How do we do this? You can help me hit that tonight by hitting that like button. Because the more you like the video, the more opportunities I will be given to be recommended here on YouTube to be shown to a bigger audience and to get more subscribers. So help. Boost. The algorithm. It's hard for me to say. The What is that? The igla? The igla. <laughs> that algorithm by hitting that like button. Let's get hype. 41K. Thank you all for, of course, the memberships. Oh, much. So much green. All this green. Love seeing the green in the live chat. My members, there will be a membership live stream within the next few weeks. I don't know what it's going to be about, but we're going to have a membership only live stream. And I can't wait for it. Check it out, check it out, check it out. All right, let's go ahead and give the shout outs a look here. Who we got, who we got? Lots of YouTube members, you like to see the green? Let's give it to, right off the bat. Highway Dylan Danger, Danger. Dylan Danger opens up this week's, tonight's shout outs. We got John, just John. We got JJ, who let the dogs out? Who let the dogs out? JJ Bulldog. We got da 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 It's yo Pink Panther. Pink Panther in his house. I also see we got, let's go down a little bit. Daniel Berry Sports Highlights. Alfredo Leva. That's it, right? Alfredo Leva. Good to have you here. You're new, I think. You're new. We got former Super Chat champion Franklin Torres in the building. We also got everyone put your hands in the air and bow down to the Super Chat champion, Corporate Clyde, Corp CA. Super Chat champion in the hair's house. Good to see you here. We got one of the most underrated YouTube members, YouTube content creators here. We are pro wrestling. Please check him out. Great content creator. You'd love to see it. Slam Tackle TV. I also see BW Rasa. We also have the Black Nostalgia Nerd. Good to have you here, sir. Oh my God, so many people here. So many people. Lots of green. Adam Ritter. Le Mexico. Le Mexico. Good to have you here. John Beal II. Jordan Williams. Sean. Good to have you here, Sean. Mr. Unfamiliar. Showing love for the 4K, 41K, excuse me, Rolando Sabio, and then the last one is going to go to King of Waco, Mundo. All right, thank you so much. For real, I am just a few subscribers away, literally just a few subscribers away from the big 4-1. To be exact, I am 17 subscribers away from the big 4-1. 401k. Let's hit it tonight. Let's hit it. Let's get it. I'm ready, man. I'm ready, Freddy, for the big 1k. All right, y'all. We're gonna go ahead and get things started with the um, the big news that just happened while SmackDown was going on. Uh, no, I'm not gonna turn off super chats. You wanna donate? Get your donations in. Three wrestlers. 
were released during tonight's episode of SmackDown. Roster cuts. We don't know exactly why they were cut. I can pretty much tell you. I can speculate based off of who was released. But ultimately, regardless of why they were released, let's just be real. These guys were not getting TV time anyways. So are we really going to lose sleep over the three that were released? At least it's not like 12, 13, a big load of talent. It's just three. Who are those three, you say? Well, let's take a look. The first one is the modern day Ramaha Raja, former WWE champion Jinder Mahal. Jinder Mahal, don't hinder the gender. Unfortunately, the gender has been hindered. Finally. He was released today. What else were they going to do with him? After that, after that great segment, and I thought it was a great segment he had with The Rock during day one, Raw day one, there was nothing else for him to do. There was nothing else they were going to do with him. Personally, it's probably best he does leave. What is he going to do? Sit in the back until they need someone else that needs to be fed to another wrestler? I'm pretty sure Tony Khan will pick him up. You know Tony Khan ain't scared to hire any of WWE's leftovers. So, you got Tony Khan probably picking up Jinder Mahal. Don't know what he's going to be called. The next one to be released is Zia Lee. Zia Lee, this one I'm not surprised by. I think Zia Lee is just a case of we gave her the shot. We put her in NXT. We put her in WWE. She just doesn't fit anywhere. This is a case of she doesn't meet our standards. She's just not good enough. She's not. Could she have been good enough at some point? Probably. I need your but she's just not. Can we induct Alex into the WWE Hoff for Mania 25 next year? I'm sure Snoop will make it within these next two years. Oh my goodness. Who's going to induct me, Snoop? You want Snoop to induct me? Y you know who needs to induct me? The person who needs to induct me is you, Corp CA. So I'll go in if you induct me. How about that? Deal? I'll happily go in. That's fine. Thank you for the donation. Yeah, I just feel like what they were giving her, the amount of TV time, the fuse that they gave her against Becky Lynch, she just never connected. She never clicked. And you know what? I like this. I like the fact that Triple H is letting talent know, look here, if I give you opportunities and you're not cooking and you're just not working with us, I'm going to release you. I'm not going to keep you around. Why? No, you're just taking no space. I'm not going to be paying you hundreds to millions of dollars to suck. No, you either meet our standard or get the fuck out of our way. Zia Lee wasn't meeting the standard. So she probably needs to go to a TNA and Impact Wrestling. I, I, what is it called? I don't know. TNA, whatever. Uh, maybe go to a stardom. Maybe even an AEW. Who knows? Go somewhere where you can improve and get better and then come back. Because when I give you TV time, you need to cook. You need to cook. Give me something I can sink my teeth into. Right? And she wasn't cooking. She fine as hell, though. Check out her. Cool. Check out her Instagram. It's going to be more Instagram photos, that's for sure. The last one is Zion Quinn. Again, like... When you get opportunities, well, actually, this one I can't even say they gave him an opportunity. I just think he's damaged goods. This is a sense of, yeah, there isn't much we can do with him. He's damaged beyond repair. We might as well let him go. Right? Because he has a good look to him. And I didn't really see much of him in NXT. People are telling me he's good. There isn't much to him, to be honest with you. So, he won't be missed. Unfortunately, he won't be missed. He wasn't getting TV time. They weren't using him. They don't have anything for him. So, why keep him? 
And that's it. Like, those three names alone. There are tons of other talent. Can I be real with you? Can we have a conversation real quick? If they were to turn around and release Shizuke Nakamura, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be shocked and I wouldn't be upset. He's damaged goods. He's lost so much and he doesn't really add much to the shows anymore. He would probably be he would most likely, not probably, but most likely be better off in New Japan Pro Wrestling who could use him right now. Rebuild him up and then maybe bring him back later when he's a lot better booked and a lot stronger booked. There are other talents too where I'm just like, yeah, if they got released, I'd be like, like I sit here and think about the Maxine Dupree's or the Akira Tozawa's. I'm like, yeah. I mean, the Indy Hartwells, I'd be like, yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? They, they're, they're those kind of talents that's been given so much TV time and they just aren't figuring it out. You know, after getting TV time for over a year and you still aren't really showing improvement, yeah, we cut you off. Because why give you TV time when I can be giving this TV time to a Roxanne Perez who I know is going to kill it? Right? Why not give this TV time to a... Who's another person on NXT that... um. I mean, of course, you got the Brian Breakers and the Carmelo Hayes and the Trick Williams and the, the Ilya Dragunov. You know what I mean? Like, there are so much other talent that they could be using that aren't damaged goods that they could be making money with. Are we really going to be that upset with them? I'm not. What do you want them to do? I'm being told that Zion Quinn is married to Harley Cameron. Really? Oh, that's an AEW pickup right there. Someone said Omos. If they released Omos, they can't get rid of him fast enough. That guy ain't it. Omos ain't it. He ain't it. If they release Joe Gacy, okay, he ain't it either. So we're going to see where things sit with the rest of the roster in the next year or so. But yeah, like if they released, if they released Maxine Dupree, if they released Omos, if they released Joe Gacy or Nakamura, Odyssey Jones, like we got Oba Femi, Odyssey Jones is completely worthless at this point. I keep him around. Why? If the standard has changed and you expect wrestlers to be able to do certain things and not waste TV time, okay, if you're not meeting that standard, they have to go. It's as simple as that. Nothing personal. They're just not meeting the standard. Well, there you go. That's that's my thoughts. I'm not going to sit here and lose my shit like I did the, the last few years about it. The last few years when they had these cuts was ridiculous. The Bray Wyatts and the Dolph Ziggler's getting cut? That, that should have never happened. That's Vince McMahon losing touch and not understanding what he had. But give me your thoughts. How y'all feeling about this, uh, this round of cuts? Uh, do you think there will be more? Someone said they might release Oscar. They're not. They're not going to release Oscar. They will never, never release Oscar. They will never release Kyrie Sane. They will never release a Dakota Kai or an Eo Sky. It ain't happening. But like the others that aren't getting TV time and who aren't really doing much, yeah, they' about to be out of here. SmackDown. <laughs> When is Veer coming? No Diddy. No Diddy. No Diddy. Wow. Wow. Really? Is that what? 
We're, we're no longer saying no homo. We're saying no diddy. Is that where it is now? We'll have to see how that one works out. I don't see it happening all that much, though. All right. SmackDown was live. Where were they? I think they were in Pittsburgh, right? Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Let me see here. The PPG Paints Arena. And they said it was 15,000 sold out. 15,000 sold out. So the streak continues. And it might continue all the way till SummerSlam. I don't see it slowing down anytime soon. Because I'm looking at, I did get a chance to look at their um, upcoming shows. Oh, they're, they're, they're set. They, they have locked in 13, 12, 15, 16, 17,000 seat arenas fans for the next, dare I say, half a year. It might slow down, might is a big word, might slow down around Survivor Series. And even then, I'm just kind of like, ah. But regardless, um, yeah, big sold out crowd. They opened up with AJ Styles and LA Knight, which shocked me because I'm thinking, well, shouldn't you close with that? I would think they would close with that. Um, just like they would close with um, any other matches for the championship, the world championship. They didn't. They closed with Bailey because she's the championship match. It was Naomi against Bailey. Looking back on it, I understand why they closed with Bailey and Naomi. They should have closed with LA Knight and AJ. They should have closed with this match. This was the better match of the two, and quite frankly, um, I feel like they had a lot more higher stakes to it. And the the idea of AJ Styles facing Cody Rose, I feel like is more important, right? So, no offense to Bailey and Naomi, who I love, and I'm happy they got the main event. I just feel like in hindsight, this should have closed the show. AJ Styles and LA Knight have a good match, as they should, as you expect them to. And AJ, as I predicted last week, got his win back from LA Knight. He beats LA Knight with a thumb in the eye and then earns himself a world championship match against Cody Rhodes. I already went on this big tangent about Cody Rhodes looking too unstoppable. I do not see AJ Styles beating Cody Rhodes. Do I see them having an excellent match? If AJ can bring his A game to front, the party, Francais, I don't even think I said that right. But party, yeah. Absolutely. Potential match of the year candidate. But we're not talking about AJ Styles from 2004, 2006. AJ Styles from 2016. AJ Styles from 2016 versus Cody Rose now would be an instant match. Corp CA is my new tribal chief, just like Solo Open Mouth Smile. Oh, no. oh no. You just own nickname Mai? You gonna disown nickname Mai? Oh no. Yo, the storyline is for real here. We got defects happening on on live stream as well. So Corp CA is now Franklin Torres's tribal chief. Will nickname my return to reclaim his throne at SummerSlam? Tune in next time. Thank you for your donation. But yeah, I, I, I just think if AJ can bring his A game, for sure, they'll have a great match. But we know AJ's going to lose. What do you do after that? So now we run into a problem with AJ. You know when you give him this opportunity, you no longer get invested in what he does because you know he's going to lose, which kills his stock. Now, in this instance, AJ's about to retire. AJ has been said that his body's breaking down and he doesn't have that much left in him. It's getting a lot harder to wake up in the morning. So I can see him calling it a day sooner than later. So him losing to Cody Rose, in a sense, makes sense. 
who are you going to do with the other talent who are still here? You know, but even then, that even then, like, what do you do with him afterwards? Do you go back into a feud with LA Knight and you finish that up? I guess so, right? Because LA Knight needs to be primed, no pun intended, and ready for Logan Paul at SummerSlam. So I don't mind AJ Styles getting the championship match here. I actually don't mind LA Knight losing this either because I feel like, all right, this will continue their feud after AJ loses to Cody. Maybe LA Knight will screw AJ. And then that's how we do AJ and Cody. Maybe we do a triple threat with those guys and then we do one more match between them before LA Knight fights Logan Paul. Playing around with it. Ain't too bad. Don't hate it. Who knows what could happen? Who knows what could happen? By the way, Franklin Torres is catching heat. Franklin Torres turned heel, disowning nickname Mai. We got Q Blackmon saying, catch me outside. How about that? I love it. Defects all over the place. Triple H, the game, enters the scene to introduce the new tag team championship designs to the SmackDown champs, Austin Theory, and of course, Grayson Wooler. And here are the championship designs. What y'all think? I think they look better than the Raw championships. I, I'm not even kidding you when I say this. This looks better than... Man, it's been a while since belts look this good. This looks amazing, y'all. These championships look pristine, spectacular. Spectacular Spider-Man. I'm sorry. Um, It looks very good. And I hope all championship designs look like this. They need to get Cody Rose a new title design. Like, if I was to add, like, one, one teensy bit of detail, I would make the center of the plate around the W blue. Like, dark blue. So, you know, fill in the world around the, the that little world emblem around the W. That's, like, the only minor thing I would change. Other than that, it's, it's perfect. I don't think they should change a goddamn thing about these belts. This is amazing. We're getting back to great championship designs. Simple, straight to the point. They look awesome. We are done with the the nickel belts. The nickel belts. The nickel back belts. And they say that a hero can save us. Not gonna stand here when they're watching us. These belts look great. I love it. And the first people to fight for these belts as a result of winning the Fatal 4-Way featuring... Okay, you know what? I, I was going to save this conversation for another day, but we got to talk about it. Authors of Pain, and that guy on Phantasma, the new Cash Republic and the Street Profit. So there's this trend going on Twitter right now where people are putting up horrible remixes of WWE theme songs where they announce their names at the beginning and then calling it the Def Rebel remix. Now, Def Rebel are the people who make the theme songs now. It's no longer Jim Johnson. It's no longer CFO Money. It's Def Rebel. And Def Rebel, they've had their share of bangers, but for the most part, for me, my personal opinion, their theme songs have been shite. They've been ass. They've been booty. Booty L's. Booty butt, booty butt, booty butt cheeks. And the trend is something that I personally love to watch. And when I listen to this theme song for the New Cash Republic, it's just like, this shit is lazy. You had them say their name at the beginning, and then you just play generic music. Why? Can I need we get back? Nickname my disowned me and why not showing up at Mania smiling face with tear. Oh man. So nickname my disowned us and then he disowned you. And so now you acknowledge. You acknowledge the super chat champ. I love it. I love it. Will you rejoin with them if he comes back though? 
Oh yes, members of Alex's channel, don't be sour. Clap for your Snapchat champ and feel the power. All hail corporate Clyde and acknowledge me. You know what, that'll be your intro from now on. That will be your intro from now on, corporate Clyde. I love it. Oh! Nah, YouTubers. YouTubers, let's do that. Oh, YouTubers! Don't you dare be sour! Clap! For your world famous super chat champ and feel the power. Ah. We'll do that. We'll let nickname I keep the tribal chief. Or, or not. Okay, we'll, we'll keep acknowledging them as the tribal chief. Put them ones up. Index pointing up. Put them ones up for your tribal chief. Acknowledge him. All right, Corporate Clyde. All right, all right, all right. But yeah, um, we're going to have the Street Profits taking on the new, newly crowned uh, WWE champs, Grayson Waller and Austin Ferry at the next pay-per-view. Uh, I don't expect Austin Ferry and Grayson Waller to drop those belts anytime soon. So there you go. Then we get to the best part of the show. Oh, goodness gracious. I I, I am excited. Y'all, I am excited to talk about this. You have no idea because I love this. I love what they're doing. I love what they're doing with this. So, Solo Sokoa. He's... Look here. You already know that they serious when someone, when they come out in a blazer... That boy Solo got out that limo with a blazer on. I said, woo-wee. He cleaned up like a mug. He looked like, he looked like a more, he looks more like a final boss than Roman Reigns did. It's like a mob boss. You don't screw with this guy. This is the kind of guy that I can, I can be like, yeah, don't fuck with him. Give him a cigarette. Give him a big ass chair, have him have his crew around him. You know what I mean? He can kick your ass. He doesn't need to kick your ass. He got other people to kick your ass. That's the kind of tribal chief, the boss that I feel Solo could be. Look at this guy. He looks like a main event player. Don't like the fact that he's been losing all his matches since he beat John Cena, but this, this is what I've been waiting for. But yeah, he got out that limousine and that blazer, and I said, this is game time. This is game time. <laughs> I acknowledge you, Corporate Chief Index pointing up. So we're just going to call him the Corporate Chief? Everybody acknowledging the Super Chat Champion. You love to see it. So Solo is talking to Paul Heyman. Where's Kevin Owens? Heyman is super nervous because he doesn't know what Kevin Owens is. He lectures him. Paul lectures him about usurping the tribal chief. And Solo cuts him off and asks him, are you done? I want to know where Kevin Owens is. Go get him. And so we get to the ring. Solo comes out with Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman explains backstage politics are happening within the bloodline right now. And before he can even say another word, this, this beast, this son of a bitch, Solo snatches the microphone from Paul Heyman. And then he gets overwhelmed with booze, just straight up hate, hate. And then the crowd starts chanting, we want Roman. We want Roman. And I'm like, look at, look at him get that heat. Look at him get that heat. You love to see it. Solo said last week he had to lose a brother in order to get an MFT, Tama Tonga. And on cue, 
we go to the stage. Here comes Kevin Owens flying out. And Kevin Owens is busted wide open. And you see Tama Tonga standing over him, smiling. And you see Kevin Owens busted open right there. Busted open. It's black and white because of YouTube. We got blood, ladies and gentlemen. We got blood once again. And then they just beat the piss out of him. It is a massacre. Kevin tried fighting back. Why? I don't know. He's an idiot. But then the, the blood line let him know that they run things. Oh, it was awesome. It was a massacre. They drew blood from Kevin Owens. Just like they decimated Jimmy Uso. This, this is what I'm looking for. This, my friends, is the very definition of how you keep a storyline going. How you revitalize a storyline and keep it going. Because like I said, this bloodline storyline was on, it was on life support. It was on his deathbed. It was dragging its heels. This revitalized it. And I'm excited because you can already see what's coming down the pike. You know Jacob Fott 2 is going to join with Solo and Tama. And you also know Roman Reigns is going to come back. He's going to win his group back. And then he's going to join up with Jimmy and Jay. So we're going to get a triple threat at SummerSlam. And you know somehow The Rock's going to get involved. And The Rock is going to set up a match between him and Roman for WrestleMania. Like this, this whole shit. Oh my goodness. I just laid out. So we get the triple threat. And then we do Roman and Solo. Right? Um, We got to get to Rock and Roman for WrestleMania. But that's, that's WrestleMania. And then... For Survivor Series, which is War Games, I can imagine them doing Kevin Owens, Cody Rhodes, Roman, Jimmy, and Jay against Solo, against Jacob, against Tama Tonga, and then they, maybe they bring in some other so, uh, Samoan, Samoan members there. Maybe they bring back The Rock. I'm just saying. Guys, like, we can get a full year out of it. This is literally a full year that we can do something with. Leading into, of course, Rock and Roman. Because I was sitting here like, man, how the hell are we going to get to Rock and Roman next year? Like, we we got to get something going. We, here it is. We got it. This is it. This is going to be fire. I can't wait for this. This is, this is, this, this has my full attention, y'all. This is the shit I look forward to. But that's neither here or there. Oh, 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 we, we're not done. Oh, you thought we were done. After the beatdown, Nick Aldis, of course, comes out. He has security go out there to break everything up. He grabs Paul Heyman. We go backstage to the parking lot, and we see Kevin Owens' car hit by Tama Tonga's car implying that Tama Tonga tried to go road rage, Grand Theft Auto, on Kevin Owens' ass. Pause. But you know what I mean. He really went hard, pause, on Kevin Owens' ass. And then, you know, Paul Heyman is basically saying, look, bro, I, I can't control him. I can't control him. He's out of, he's... He, he's, he's out of line. But then, of course, Nick Aldis said, next week is the draft, lots of eyeballs. He won't tolerate this kind of behavior next week. It's up to him to make sure the bloodline understands. Because he says, losing isn't the only thing that has consequences, he says. And he slaps Paul on the wrist before leaving. Because that was a slap on the wrist. Get it? Eh, eh. Sorry. I love it. This was, this was, oh my God. It, it just feels good to have good storytelling back. Good storytelling back. So, apparently, Franklin Torres is telling people he will give you money if you acknowledge, if you acknowledge Corporate CA as the tribal chief. Yo, hey, Q Blackman. Q Blackman. If he sends you some money, give a little something something. Give a little something something to your boy. 
Give a little something, something. It don't have to be a lot, but give me a little something, something. I love it. I love it. This is so good. Hey, y'all want y'all want y'all want a couple dollars? Y'all want a couple dollars? Y'all better start acknowledging corporate CA, corporate Clyde as your tribal chief. All right, let's move on. Carlito Calibri and Cody. Carlito took on Santos Escobar. This match was boring. This match was boring. LWO, Legado del Fantasma, it's just cold. I just don't care about it. It's cold. It's boring. It's, it's not doing anything for anyone. And they are trying really hard, really hard to push Santos Escobar. It's just not working. I don't even think Santos is a bad dude. He's just boring. It's boring. I'm sorry. What do you want me to say? He's boring. Uh, he's boring. Uh, he's boring. It's not working for me. But you already know where this is leading. Santos ends up pinning Carlito with the Phantom Driver. Electro Lopez almost killed Zelina Vega. Literally almost killed her by almost basically ramming her head into the the barricade. But Santos wins, and then we get Kayla Braxton in the skybox talking to damage control. Dakota Khan's fine ass. Well, I'll look. Kyrie Sane is cute. Eo Sky is fine. Asuka is fine. But Dakota Kai is woo Nelly. Now that's my girl. Not to take anything from Jay Cargill, who's also fine as hell, and Bianca, who is woo Nelly. But she's taken, by the way. I can't mess with that. Is Dakota Kai single? She is single. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, anyways, um, yes, Jay Cargill and Bianca Belair. Arriving at a skybot next to damage control. Basically, they're gonna go after the tag team titles and they will lose the belts. Sorry, Oscar, you're you're just gonna lose those belts because you know how this works. Um, it's Jay Cargill. Sorry, what do you want me to say? Cody Rose showed up via satellite. Uh oh, there, he's showing up via satellite. This is where it starts. I'm fucking around. He was wrestling somewhere. He was overseas, so he couldn't make tonight. Not a big deal. Main event was Bailey versus Naomi. This match was it was solid. wasn't spectacular. wasn't anything I would watch twice. They had a solid match. I, I just kind of feel like it never got out of first gear. There was wrestling, things were getting fun, and then Tiffany Stratton just interfered, and it was a DQ win for Bailey. And then Tiffany Stratton hit the prettiest move saw ever. The BME and the PME. The PME, the, the BME or the PME. I don't give a damn. The prettiest moonsault ever on Bailey and Naomi, and then the show just cuts off with Tiffy. And I'm just like, eh. All right. Like, I'm sorry. Like, for me, if, if, if Tiffany was going to interfere personally, I would have just had Tiffany. I would have just opened up with Naomi and Bailey. If Tiffany was going to interfere in costume, just open up with Naomi and Bailey. And then end with AJ and LA Knight. That's what I would have done. Honestly, they probably should have just ended with the bloodline. The bloodline. That shit was dope. But, yeah, that's that's it. Like, nothing else to really say about this episode. Overall, it was... I don't want to grade it too high. Because... I want to give it a high score simply because of what they did with the bloodline. That's, that's the kind of person I am. I'm not going to do that. I'll say it was a solid episode overall. We had some good wrestling in there. Again, I thought the opening match was good, and the main event was solid. Everything with the bloodline was fantastic. Oh, my goodness, it was great. And then everything else around it was just sprinkles. It doesn't... You know what I mean? It didn't harm the show. It, it did its job. You know, Street Profits are going to take on the new WWE champs, tag team champs. That's fine. Kevin Owens getting blade open, getting busted open was literally one of the best things about the show. Um, they're setting up Roman Reigns perfectly fine to be a babyface. We already talked about him. If you're going to bring Roman back to be a babyface, make him flawed. Don't just bring him back as a white meat babyface. It's not going to work. But, yeah, like, it, it was it was solid. It got the stories in. 
did his thing, didn't know stay his welcome, and it was gone. So, I, I'll, I'll say it was good. I'll say it was good. Um, so next week will be the draft. And you know how this works. I'm going to be here to literally recap the draft. And then we'll do the same thing the very next Monday. And then the week after that will be, I think, Backlash, right? Yeah, Backlash. There you go. So we're... We're, we're 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 not we're gonna we're not gonna be slowing down anytime soon. We're not gonna slow down. We can't slow down. You wanna know why? You wanna know why, ladies and gentlemen? We're not gonna slow down. Because I want to thank all of you. I want to thank you all for helping me set what I think is a new record on the channel. I didn't think it was possible, but as of what time is it? I need your love. I need your time. I need to be free with you tonight. I need your love. Just wanted to hop in and say, damn, those tag titles are everything. Musical notes, this shit is everything to me. This shit is everything. Musical notes. Hey, three diglets. I see what you're doing. You letting people know, hey. Corp CA is Tribal Chief now, but will he be at SummerSlam? Yo, Corporate Clyde, my man, you got some challenges just sitting in the wings. I love you, and you are my Tribal Chief, but what's going to happen when Nickname I decides I want my belt back? Or when Three Diglets decides that shit is mine? Corporate Clyde. Will you be able to stand up to them and let them know that you really are the tribal chief? I hope so. And I believe SummerSlam this year, especially, is going to be very special. And I'm excited about it. It's going to be a great year. But, um, yeah, I want to thank you all for helping me make history. As of 11.19 p.m., Just Alex, I believe, has just hit 41,000 subscribers let me look at you real quick okay i don't want to lie to you okay so on a on a third app here in Streamlabs, it says i've hit i've hit forty one thousand, but it hasn't updated yet on youtube so here's what we're gonna do i'm gonna wait a little bit longer let's not celebrate yet i want to see it appear in the youtube metrics first right Let's wait for it to appear in the YouTube metrics. Then we will um, definitely, yeah, because I'm looking at the live count right now on YouTube. It's still four thousand. It's still forty thousand nine hundred eighty-seven. So we're still thirteen away. We're still thirteen away. So I will check it after we hang out here. I will check it. I will definitely check it here, ladies and gentlemen. But. Thank you all so much for joining me. Uh, get your, oh my goodness, get your, the super chats tonight are nuts. Get your super chats. Get your super chats in, ladies and gentlemen. We, we got some heavy hitters tonight. Oh my goodness, look at look at all the donations. Thank you. Thank you, all. Uh, seriously, this, this is crazy. What a time, what a time to be a wrestling fan. What a time to be in Alex's world. Let's go ahead and, um, Let's go ahead, ladies and gentlemen, and see what y'all been talking about. Corp. I need your love. I need your time. Or we can just do the super chat. Let's just get to the super chat. Let's go. I need your love. Like I said, Hell in the Cell open challenge at SummerSlam. It's gonna be a bloody fight. It's gonna be a blood fest. And you know Corp CA is coming with the dollar dollar bills. But who else gonna come with it? Who else gonna come with it? I'm curious. Wow! Cody bring the winged eagle belt after those tag team titles. He better. He better. Alfredo, is this your first donation? I think that was your first donation, Alfredo. Thank you if it was. 
Actually, it's not. It's probably, it's not, otherwise it would have said it. Well, thank you. Wow. Thank you for the donations, guys. Yeah, it's awesome that my channel is blowing the hell up. It's, it's incredible. Like, the thing about this with YouTube, especially nowadays, once you get this momentum going, it doesn't stop. And so I'm, I'm feeling the momentum. It's not just on YouTube, it's everywhere. It's on Twitter, it's on Instagram, it's on my Facebook page, it's on TikTok. The momentum is here. And I feel like it's starting to spread across social media. Um, I'm hoping we can keep it up. I'm wanting to see if I can keep it up as much as I can. I'll do what I gotta do to keep it going. Let me see here. And the... Uh, let me see here for a minute. We got the Black Nostalgia Nerd. Can they release Alexa Bliss? Yo! Seriously? What did Alexa Bliss do to you, sir? Denisha Lane. Hey, everyone. Denisha Lane. What? 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 Oh, Lord! Run. Run. Lafine, three diglets, one hundred dollar super chat. My goodness, my man. Thank you. Hey, three diglets. I love you, man, and I appreciate you. And you know, this is this is family. Like you are family with A and B combos, you family with us. Lafine, understand something. You're not just dealing with your average champions here, Lafine. Now, Three Diglets knows this. I'm letting you know, Lafine. We here in Alex's world, oh, we don't fuck around. We don't fuck around. When we go for this championship, you best be ready to to. To spill some blood. Cause you going head to head with the sharks. We swimming with the big You playing with the big boys now. Playing with the big boys now. Swim with sharks, baby. That's funny. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is fun. I love it. Big donation, though. Oh, my God. Donations tonight are insane. See, this is what happens when WWE does big business. You love to see it. You just love to see it. Okay, let me get back to these uh these reactions. So, Homeboy said get rid of Alexa Bliss. Why? I love Alexa Bliss. I would like to see Alexa Bliss work under a Triple H. Although, I don't see that working out very well. I think Alexa Bliss was a Vince McMahon girl, but we'll see. Let me see here. The new tag team championships are like WWF nostalgia. Like real talk, JJ Bulldog, I agree. So much better. So much better. Uh, someone said there was a QR code. There was, I think. I never looked it up. What was it about? What was it about? Who saw, who actually did research on the QR code? I can look at it real quick. Let me see. Let me see what the QR code was about. Might as well just look at it really quickly since I'm just I'm her. I'm her, I'm her. Let me see here. I'm uh, I'm actually looking this up. I'm actually looking this up because I'm curious. QR code WWE. Alright, what was it about? Uh, well, I found it. I don't know what the hell it is. It looks like a crow. I 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that one I'm I'm I don't know. Like guys, I'm sorry. I'm just I'm just not into it. Like I loved it when Bray Wyatt was doing it. I don't think I love it as much. As um as much as uh, everybody else is, so Yeah, uh QR code was a psychological test of Blackbird and Uncle Howdy's. I'm saying it because I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like I, I saw it. It's just it, it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. I, I just, I appreciate it more when it was Bray Wyatt. Simple as that. Oh, everybody loved. Everyone loved my intro for Corp CA. Oh, YouTubers, don't you dare! Bushawa, clap for your world famous super chat champ and feel the power. Love it. I love it. Let me see here. I see a lot of ones in the live chat, though. We still got some nickname my followers. I don't know if you can flip them all. That's okay, though. That's okay, because they still they still here for nickname my. I love the defects. Like, what? Yo, Franklin. Are we having an open challenge, lol? Nah, 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 nah. Nope, nope. We we gonna wait. We gonna wait. We waiting. Now, I'm not gonna allow it. We are waiting. We are waiting to defend this belt at SummerSlam. Show restraint. Show restraint. Okay. Show restraint. I know. I know. I know y'all want a Super Chat Championship battle, but we're not going to have it here on a random episode of SmackDown. I won't allow it. A Super Chat title, a championship defense of this magnitude deserves to be at a big four show. Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I, as the general manager, will not allow this to fly. Clyde, you will defend your belt at SummerSlam. Jesus Christ. Wait, what? The belt is on the line tonight? By God. No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Executive order. It is not on the line. It is not on the line. It will be... We are waiting until SummerSlam. We are waiting... No. We're going to wait until SummerSlam. We're waiting until SummerSlam. I know they want to go right now. You, you can tell they, they want it. They want it right now. The fans want it. They want it. I'm going to make you wait. I'm going to make you pay for it. Well, you're not actually going to pay. Technically, you are. But you know what I mean. I'm going to make you wait for it. I'm going to make you salivate for it. I want you to see these donations, and I want you to get hyped. Get hyped, goddammit! Are you hyped? Get hyped. No, oh, I love it. I love it. Everyone looking at the live chat like, well, goddamn, uh, it's like that. It's like that. I love it. I love seeing the love. I love seeing the love. Alex, it looks like we have our main event for SummerSlam. Franklin versus 3D versus Corporate Clyde. 3D? Is that what we're calling him? I love it. Corporate Clyde. Franklin. Hey, it's Franklin. Coming over to play. 
I like it. I like it. No. Oh my goodness. I just... Y'all, look at these donations. Oh my god. I'm ready to go now, smile with horns. No, you will wait until SummerSlam, sir. SummerSlam in August. You will wait. I will not allow this to happen tonight! Not on a random episode of SmackDown. Dag nabbit. Executive Order. SummerSlam. This is a nice taste. It's good to tease him. It's good to tease it. It's good to make fans go, I want more! You can't stop him! There's no stopping this train! Oh, okay. I'll crawl back into my La Fiend cave. Okay. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. There you go. Whatever. They gave you a little tease of it. They let you know what's going to happen. But the Super Chats are going to go ahead and gonna go ahead and uh, fall back for tonight. And I appreciate Thank you so much. Oh, my goodness. Over $500 worth of donations right now. Jesus, Lord, Mary, and Joseph. Lord, Mary, and Joseph. Look at these. Look at this. What a way to celebrate 41,000 subscribers. What a way to celebrate 41K. You hit 41K and then you get over $500, $500 in donations. I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm privileged, and I'm happy to have all of you watching me, subscribing to me, checking out my content. People like you make this worth it and I appreciate you. You know this, and you know this, man. I'm grateful to all of you. I'm like going back and forth because I really, I really want to check and see if I um. Ah, uh, it's updating too slow. We're at forty thousand nine hundred ninety. Okay, we're, uh, we're not gonna. I don't think we're gonna be able to make it for tonight. But thank y'all so much. Thank y'all. Like, real talk, I, I am beyond grateful for you guys con continuing to make this one of the best channels here in the YouTube space. And I I'm going to pay you back. Understand that. I'm going to pay you back. Um, breaking news, Veer has been released by WWE. Are you serious? Oh, are we still getting releases? Oh, we're not done? We're not done? Really? So Vera's not coming no more? No! Are we serious? Is Vera gone? Has Vera? Yep, there it is. Vera has been released by WWE. Okay, so I guess we're not going anywhere. You're no fun, confused face. Ah, you'll be alright. You'll be alright. We'll hold the championship in a couple of months. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got you. I got you, buddies. I got you. Yep, no more beer. It's been confirmed. I should probably write something. What do I want to write? I guess beer is no longer coming. WWE. He's no longer coming in WWE. Yeah, I'm gonna say that. He's no longer coming in WWE. He's been released. He's 
been released. Yeah, that's that's the tweet. I guess Beer is no longer coming in WWE. That's that's the tweet. <sighs> that poor thing. All that time for him to come and only get released. He finally came, only to be released. He came and he got his release. Oh God, I need to stop. I need to stop it. I need to stop, I'ma stop. That's great, honestly. Uh, Sanga, who's, who's Sanga? Someone's saying another one. Okay, I guess we're just, I guess we're not going nowhere. Uh, this is just gonna be a whole round of releases. Who the hell is Sanga? Do I? I don't even want to start another stream. I just want to be here and react. Let me see. I guess that's what we'll do. We'll, we'll just sit here and just react to all the people being released. Uh, apparently. Apparently, this is all being reported by Sean Ross Sapp. Who the hell is, who the hell is Sanga? Who's that? Okay, I guess. Like, Sanga got released. Was he on NXT? Should I know who that is? Oh, well. I got nothing. Apparently, Sango was with Veer on NXT. I don't know. All right. Cool, I guess. I don't know what else to say to that. So, I, I guess we're just going to be reacting to all the releases. Because I'm, I'm still kind of like, who the fuck is Sango? Who that? Nice try, Bush was released. I get what you did there, because he's no longer Pete Dunne. I got I got it, sir. You, you think you're funny. Uh, I guess, okay, this is how we get to 4v1000 then. I get to 4v1000 reacting to WWE releases. Might as well, right? Uh, I'm, just, I just, I'm just gonna keep refreshing with Sean Rossap here. I think that might have been it. Doesn't seem like there's any more coming coming this way. I don't know. Like I, I feel like now anyone else they release, it, it's not gonna be like a big big loss. You get me? I don't really think it's gonna be like if they release like for instance if they end up releasing Karrion Cross I'm like all right you know you know what I mean like you, you can't really save him and like I said Nakamura they end up releasing Nakamura you're like well, I mean yeah kind of damaged goods at this point so what you gonna do bad boys bad boy what you gonna do What you gonna do when they come for you? I don't see I don't see any other releases here. Alright, guys, look, it, it is late. It is late. We're gonna go ahead and cut we're gonna go ahead and get out of here. I'm 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 already kinda worn out, so um don't worry about. Uh oh. What did I do? What did I do? Did I did I mess something up? One second, y'all. I think I might have accidentally moved over the Logitech camera. Oh, I did. Oops. One second. Okay. There we go. Okay. 
All right, just wanted to cover that up really quickly. All right, regardless, um, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut it off here. Thank you all so much for joining me for this uh, live stream. We have one more pay-per-view live stream this week, AEW Dynasty. Yeah, some of you forgot about that show. It's happening this Sunday. I will be up here live to talk about it. And I think the card's going to be good. I think it's going to be an overall great show, and hopefully it delivers on the level that we know it should. So... Uh, I will see you guys Sunday for AEW Dynasty. And in the meantime, thank you guys for watching. Do all the YouTube things. Like the video, subscribe, and click that bell to catch all my content when it comes out. Follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and donate using PayPal, Patreon, Cash App, and Venmo. You guys are amazing. Thank you for the amazing donations. And, hey, show your love to the, the Super Chat champ, Corporate Clyde, Franklin Torres, who acknowledges his tribal chief, and, of course, Three Diglets, who's coming for the belt. At SummerSlam. See, ladies and gentlemen, storylines don't just happen in WWE. They happen here in Alex's world, which is always going to be a safe space for wrestling fans like you. But until next time, I will see you guys this Sunday in my next stream. I'm out. Take care. Peace. Oh, when you're